God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I'm going to give you a message that all will love today. Hooray! I'm going to talk about God is love. From 1 John, yes, it's in the Bible, 1 John chapter 4. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that knoweth not... He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. And this was manifested the love of God towards us, because that God sent His only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through Him. That we might live through Him. A love of God... It's sacrificial. It's never lustful. As your typical love of America is today. Most love is what can I get? Never mind what for you. Never mind for anybody else but it's me, me, myself, and I. But the love of God is plain in the Bible that God sent His Son to you for your need. A was set upon Calvary. For John 3.16, For God so loved, past tense, the world that He gave. A true love is giving. And let me tell you, the Bible says if God is love, and you do not know what God is, you do not know who God is, you have not believed in the Lord Jesus Christ who is God, you don't know what love is. Because love is of God, and you cannot have true love unless you have God. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. The love of God is Jesus Christ. And if you do not know Jesus Christ, you do not know the love of God. Love everybody else. Love others. There's no place in here that says love yourself. Hereby we know that we dwell in Him. He in us because He has given us of His Spirit. And yet Jesus testified in the Gospel of John the Holy Spirit is not given to the world. The Holy Spirit is not given to the unsaved. If you do not know Christ as your Savior, you don't have God's Spirit. You have a devilish spirit. You are of your father, the devil. John 8, 44. The, ado the adoption that we become children of God, sons of God, is manifested by the Spirit through the finished work of the Gospel that Christ died for our sins, was buried according to the Scriptures, and arose again the third day of the Scriptures. That is how you are manifested into the family, to be a child, to be a son of God, by the gospel of the loving of God by Jesus Christ. Whosoever, whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwells in him, and he in God. And we know... We have known that believe the love that God has to us. God is love. And he that dwells in love dwells in God and God in him. Again, twice in the Bible, God is love. But whosoever, whosoever is found in this chapter about God's love. And when you run back to 316 of John, the Bible says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God 
in his love has sent the big mouth preacher to you today and try to do me every week. He said, why do you come and preach? Why are you upset our assembly? Why are you ruining our commerce? Because God is love. And God has told people like me to go eat all the world and preach the gospel. To preach the gospel of God's love towards you. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. We preach the gospel because that is the love of God. God is not willing that any should perish. He wants us here to tell you what He expects from you. We are here to tell you how to get to heaven. And that way Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by me. The very love of God towards you is us reaching out to you to show you the truth. The truth is not in religion. The truth is not in works. The truth is not in you because Jesus said ye need to be born again. You are born in the wrong birth. You must, Jesus said, be born again. The love of God is He's reaching out to you with an invitation. An invitation for you to come to His Son. The sacrifice approved and met by God that you may be saved. For God so loved the world that He gave. Loving is giving. It's not taking. It's not in the back seat. It's not as long as you know troubles come along and then we'll get a piece of paper and end it all. That's not love. Many of you adult people here have had many true loves, many loves, countless loves. And yet you inquire the love of God when you don't even understand love. No man can understand the true value of love because he's not born of God. Ye must be born again. Ye must be born of the Spirit. You must obey God. You must become part of God's family, a child of God, to understand the love of God. Unless you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, you cannot have the love of God. You can't even understand the love of God. And yet the Bible tells you if you are not of God... And John 8, 44, John 8, 44, John 8, 44, ye are of your father the devil, the lust, that is opposite of the love. God has love. Satan has lust. There's a difference. There's no middle road for love. It's either of God or of Satan. And the love of Satan is lust. Listen, women. When that man got you into that bedroom, that was lust. That wasn't love, and you know it. You are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and bold not in the truth. He speaketh a lie. Wasn't that guy right there? That first one that got you into the captivity of the bedroom? Wasn't that all lies to get you there? I read in my Bible that God is the truth. I read in the Bible that God is unable, unwilling, and not capable of telling a lie yet. Satan is. God is all truth. Satan is all lies. God is love. And Satan is lust. When he speaketh a lie, all kinds of lies. You want to hear a lie that Satan speaks today? Santa Claus is a lie. I hope I said that loud enough for your children to hear. A lie of Satan is Santa 
what you're doing. Jesus is writing down what you're doing. He knows when you've been good or bad. You bring me that fat man right here, right now, with an ID that says Santa Claus, I apologize on my knees. Bring him here. And I'll bring you to Jesus Christ, the one that knows everything about you. And the one that will stand judge at the judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne judgment. See, God's incapable of lusting. God's incapable of lying. Everybody wants to speak about the love of God. A pure, holy love. And with that pure, holy love, He has restrictions about His love. And again in John 3.16, His restriction is, For God so loved the world. That's not a period. That's a comma. The sentence ain't finished. That He gave His only begotten Son. The object of God's love is the Son. The Lord Jesus Christ is God's love. So when you say God is love, you are saying God is Jesus Christ. Try that as a Jehovah Witness. So God loves you, or loved you, past tense. God's love is manifested by the Lord Jesus Christ. That, we still got a comma, we still got a comma, that whosoever believeth in Him, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, comma. God's love towards you is the Lord Jesus Christ. God's love for you is the Lord Jesus Christ, and the condition is you got to believe in it. you got to believe the love of God. You can't think he was a good teacher. You can't think he was a good man. You can't claim atheism. You can't claim, claim a cannibal Jesus, or you eat him. You can't proclaim a Jesus that came to North America. You can't, you got to proclaim the Son of God of who He is. God manifested in the flesh, born of a virgin, came down and met your sacrifice for sins, payment upon the cross. Out of the comma, but have everlasting life. Romans 6.23 says, The wages of sin is death. You're going to die. If there's one thing I can prophesy right now, you're going to drop dead one day. And there's another thing I can prophesy. You're going to go to heaven or you're going to go to hell after your death, according to the Bible. God's love has been shown to you, has been manifest to you, that there is a way to heaven by the Lord Jesus Christ. you got to believe it. Because you're going to die. And you're going to die because you are a sinner. The wages of sin is death. Never mind being getting hit by a greyhound bus. You're going to die because you are a sinner. You share that with every human being. You will die. No matter how, no matter what, you will die. You do not want to die in your sins. You do not want to have your bills marked for all the sins in your life. You want them washed. You want them sins clean. You want them removed. And the only way by that is by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God. Now the wages of sin is death. But, the gift of God, 
Most gifts are given because they love you. Somebody will give you a gift because there's love. A gift is giving love. I love you. I have sacrificed dollars. I have sacrificed time. I have sacrificed to give you something. And when you sacrifice time, money, something, that is love. And giving a gift is a sacrificial love that matches John 3.16. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God. God has a gift for you because He loves you. He has taken time out. Thirty-three and a half years. He has taken time out. He has given of His own riches where He was rich. And yet He became poor. For God is love that He has a gift for you that Allah or any other God, Pope or whoever, cows or anything, cannot provide or not God. Yes! God is love. And that love is manifested in the Lord Jesus Christ upon the gospel that He died for your sins. He was buried according to the Scriptures and arose again the third day according to the Scriptures. That is the gift of God for you to attain, to get, to take the offer, to receive, to take the gift, to go to heaven. words to get to heaven, Jesus Christ. Three words to get to heaven, only Jesus saves. Anything else is the wrong answer. Anything else, you take that gift of God, you go back to the store and say, I don't like it, it don't fit, I'd rather do it my own way, can I have my own money, can I have my sins back, thank you. Here's the receipt. Take my sins back. And that's exactly what you do when you reject Jesus Christ. You tell God, I don't want it. I don't like it. It's ugly. I can do it myself. Give me my sins back, please. And you know how the Bible says, few that enter therein, but many will go to the Broadway. Walmart, December 26, will have more lanes for exchanges than they will have for purchases. As you will have more people who will go into hell by exchanging God's gift to you for anything else that they like. Because Jesus Christ is not approved in their life. Jesus Christ is not approved of their ways. Jesus Christ is not approved of their religion. They don't want Jesus Christ. He don't fit. He's not the one. But in the eyes of God, He is the way, He is the truth, and He is the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by me. You better receive the gift of God, which is Jesus Christ, and you better wrap that thing up, and you better put all your faith into it, and you better say that this is my offering to God for my sins. Don't exchange Jesus Christ for anything else, because anything else will not fit. Anything else will not get you into the new Jerusalem. Anything else will come up short when it comes to salvation. God is not willing that any perish is another love of God. Jesus tells us in the book of Matthew, Hell was made for Satan and his angels. It was never made for man. But since Adam and Eve disobeyed what God told them to do, as we all disobey what God tells us to do, we never do what God tells us to do. At that point, sin came into our lives. We became as gods. We know good. We know evil.
evil, and now our penalty, our sentence under the judge is hell. But God is long-suffering. He's not willing that any should perish. He does not want you to go to hell. Mark 16 tells us Christians with a Bible, go eat all the world and preach the gospel to them, that they may know the way, they may know the truth, and they may know the life and how to get to me, the Father. So you see, God's not willing that any should suffer, and you don't like us here, you don't approve of us here, but God loves us here, and God loves you by sending us here with an open Bible that you may know what God approves. And you also may know by these weekly messages we try to be here, but what God doesn't approve, because we have shown you through the Scriptures, weeks after weeks after weeks, for all those that sit here, week after weeks after weeks. The love of God is He does not want to cast you into the lake of fire. God has done everything He can to stop you by the gift of God, which is Jesus Christ. Thirty-three and a half years, Jesus Christ did everything that you cannot do, that you may not go into hell. By dying for you, by suffering for you, by even going into hell itself for you, by making a payment for your sins, that you can never pay. And all your Bible says is you got to believe. What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. But, not a but, Revelation, if you choose to reject Jesus Christ, the gift of God, Jesus ain't the reason for the season. Come on. Christmas has nothing to do with Jesus Christ. Christmas is a pagan holiday. He wasn't born on December 25th. Camus was born on December 25th. Christ was never in Christmas. Christ is in the Bible. Christ is sitting at the right hand of the Father today, right now, reaching out to your heart to become a believer and a follower and saved by His blood. And we've talked about, in two places, the love of God. We've talked about whosoever whosoever and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire this is the second death and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire that whosoever that is found in John 3.16 that if you reject God's gift God's love and your name is not put into the last book of life. You will be cast into the lake of fire for all eternity because, not because you're an adulterer, not because you've done drugs, not because you've stolen, not because only reason why you'll go into hell because your sins have not been paid by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. You have rejected the gift of God which payeth the price for your sins. People today wake up in hell because they told God, I don't want your gift. I reject what you are offering me, God. That Jesus Christ, that ain't good enough for me. That Jesus Christ, he's, oh man, bloody, I don't want him. I got my grandma's religion. I don't believe in you, God. I don't know if there's a God. I'm good enough. The ladies love me. 
in all those actions, you are rejecting. Talk about Christmas, tis the season, run your credit card bills up, gifts under the tree. Well, the gift of God's not under the tree, it's on the tree. The tree at Calvary's cross, that is the gift of God. When they took him down and buried him, and he arose again the third day. That gift came out of the graveyard and is seated at the right hand of the Father, being preached by us today for you to know eternal life. And the eternal life is put into the gift of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. And you can take that gift and you can exchange it for something else. I warn you not to. My words are to you to receive that gift today. It may not solve all your earthly problems. It may not heal that cancer. It may not even get, a, get rid of that alcoholism. It may not fix your marriage. But it will fix your destination upon your death from hell to heaven by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ by putting your sins under the blood. It is so important. It is so vital. It is so on top of God's lift of love that He left His heavenly. He left the riches of heaven. He left the very throne of His Father in heaven. And came down to this miserable planet. Came down to us miserable sinners. If God doesn't want us, if God doesn't love us, then why did He come and die on the cross for you? Tell me, oh, tell me why did He come? Tell me why He suffered. And then tell me why after the suffering, after the death, after the burial, after the resurrection, that he writes in his gospel, the last chapter of Mark 16, after all that, he tells me, go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. When God is love, that ain't just words. When God is love, it is action. It is a verb. It is a sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ. The finished work of not just Calvary, but the empty tomb. When the angels proclaimed on the gift card, He is not here. He is risen. That is the love of God. That is the gift of God. That is what God has proclaimed to a lost and dying world. On this tis the season, run your credit cards up. There is one gift above all gifts, and yet that gift can be exchanged. That gift is the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's funny, ha uh ha, -huh. that that gift can be received today. It don't have to wait to December 25th. I received in April 1987. There's someone today who has a gift that they have received the Lord Jesus Christ today, and they've been given a new birthday by being born again. And he comes from the north. But it's not Santa Claus. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. You celebrate as 
supposedly his birthday, and it ain't his birthday that can count. That baby grew up and went to the cross. That baby died upon the cross. That baby was buried in the tomb. That baby that Pilate said, the man Christ Jesus. And the angels proclaimed, he is not here. He is risen. Jesus is not the reason for the season. He is the reason for your blood atonement for your sins to get you out of hell. Christ died that you may have life. Life that you're losing because you're a sinner. And because you're a sinner, and based upon life, the wages of sin is death. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. The gift that God is offering you is eternal life by the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the most important gift of all time. I'm sorry I didn't bring this on December 25th, but you wouldn't be here December 25th.